there. Seven thousand meters. Yeah, I'm always surprised by some of the depth extensions and range extensions that we find on these cruises. We think we know something, and it <laughs> always seems to turn out to be just a little bit wrong. Things are found in places we didn't expect. Jake, someone wants to know if we control the descent and ascent uh, times, or um, if it's just a set time. We have we have some control over it. It depends how deep we're going, and it also depends how heavy the vehicles are, um, or how heavy Hercules is. Uh, so on our descent, we can go pretty much uh, 30 meters per minute. That's like the max uh, winch speed that's safe uh, for, for our winch. Um, and then on ascent, we're limited by the weight of Hercules, how fast it can go up, which is usually around 15 meters per minute. And then so we match that with the winch with Argus when they both come up at around the same speed. getting all the snacks. Like, oh. Smells like Bob's eating those cheat chili Fritos. <laughs> Is that what you're eating, Bob? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell it. it. Smells like the chili like Fritos. It's the chili cheese Fritos. <laughs> Do you think they taste like chili? Uh, they're good. I like them. Fading fast. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly fading. Well, yeah, it's almost midnight. I can field questions if they come in, if you want to take a break. Uh, I'm just going to rest my head. My eyes are up. My brain's awake. Oh, 
Also, if I take a break, I fear I never will return. <laughs> yeah. Very dangerous. <laughs> Were they up when you went down there? Oh. <laughs> oh. Good. Must have a, must be going through a squall or something. Yeah, winds up to 16. Yeah. It's time to invest in a zipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it. What does the rest of the week look like, weather-wise? Um, so today is to so a week from now. It's <laughs> really fun. Looks <laughs> really nice up in the northern part. Um, so we just have to get from here to there. So it looks like it'll be all right in this vicinity for a few days. Um, So you're saying our transit to the northern part won't be fun? It's just going to, I don't think we'll be able to do it until, so we might slowly get up there. We'll go to uh, <coughs> Kingman again, and then a little bit north of there for a seamount. Maybe some mapping near Kingman. And then... Um, yeah, by Tuesday or yeah, so we'll get a dive or two and some mapping in by next Tuesday, and then do some more dives up there, up in the uh, the western, northern, yeah. northwestern part. So yeah, I've got a dive plan with me, or the uh, cruise plan. up to Kingman. Something that uh, is not currently named that Steve's calling Seamount Alpha. Maybe we're there. I think get over to C. And so are we unfortunately missing the few, like, we're not going to get to all of the planned no. ones? Nope. But we're throwing in some unplanned ones. That's so. true. Yeah. I think, let's see, one, two, three.
What's the, what day is the first? Friday. Of next week. Yeah. So I think we can get in seven dives, seven or eight dives total. Before Friday? Yeah. Maybe the last one would be on Friday and then or, or end that day. Fingers we get crossed. Back into port on a Monday. Is that the fifth? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we got to plan on maybe 10 knots for our transit home. No, we can't go. Well, we won't make 11 knots going into the wind. It's going to be bad. Wind. Is that what you're saying? Uh, Just not if the answer is yes. <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be rolling again. Yeah. <laughs> <I love you. laughs> Must be getting some good wind. Yeah, the ship's trying always, to change heading. It's always like that. Huh? Yeah, it's sliding <laughs> up. It's because there's like 20 rolls of tape. Sometimes this watch is annoying because I'm hungry when I really shouldn't be hungry. Like, if I was sleeping, I wouldn't be hungry. You know what I mean? Midnight. Yeah, I agree. But, like, right now, my stomach just growled and it really, I'm not hungry. Like, yeah. it just feels like I should be eating something right now. So no, mid yeah. Midnight munchies. Yeah. So. <laughs> ate a bag of Doritos after I watched this night. <laughs> There has been a lot of chips on this cruise. Yeah, I've appreciated that. Same. Last cruise I was snacking on cornflakes. <laughs> I haven't even really, I mean, I opened one box of like granola bars I had, but like I still have snacks I haven't even opened from when we had to quarantine. I have a whole bag of hot Cheetos that I haven't <laughs> opened yet. I just feel like we're going to all be in a mad dash at the end where it's going to be like the last weekend and we're all like, eat the snack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have that giant <laughs> bag of powdered Gatorade. <laughs> I've seen you with it. <laughs> I saw the dealer down in the alley. <laughs> what flavor is it? 
It's a uh, blue frost. I don't know. It's the light blue, the light blue flavor. I'm trying to finish that. So if anyone wants Gatorade, come to me. Come to me. <laughs> Can't bring that sucker home. So. <laughs> What's in this bag? <laughs> <laughs> Look at these warriors coming up for the zero to four. Awesome. Seriously. Well. <laughs> hey. Oops. I thought it was a bird. <laughs> <laughs> he got in. <laughs> You did? <laughs> For anyone watching, uh, we are doing a watch change. Down There's in the middle there. still about an hour and a half of that's uh, a, a loop in the tether. ascending time, so like, still well, a lot of blue water to go like get back up gap. to the surface, yeah. but changing of the watches. It's like it, it hemorrhaged, yeah, it hemorrhaged out the side. And yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully that doesn't destroy the so tether. We'll be yeah. with you soon. Like, yeah. We have we have ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we don't break it. <laughs> no. I'm letting him sleep unless he, we have to get him. I don't know. But... Well, so he got up at five this morning to do his interaction. He did? Oh, you dog. <laughs> oh, I didn't get no stinking nap. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have, I have a... <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's a hemorrhage in the tether out the side. So hopefully it doesn't. Ah.
No, no, I... Oh. Oh, because Coralie has a lot of Gatorade, so we were talking about it. It's been a weird, it's been a weird three hours. Dave, are you staying up for the whole thing? Dave? Are you? Yeah, same. Oh. Yeah, I did an hour and it should have taken more. Is that going, it's not going out, right? The teleprompter. We saw a Dumbo octopus for five seconds. Ooh, where was that? Not on camera. Oh. The world didn't see it. We saw it on like one of Herc's cams, but not on the camera for everyone to see. So it was just for uh, us. It's like the okay. shark from yesterday. That's so cool. Was that at the seafloor or on the way up? On <laughs> the way up. Okay. <laughs> About two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> The octopus wanted you to see something during your blue water segment. We did see the seafloor. It was uh, very much <laughs> And then it went away. <laughs> yeah, you had <laughs> some good by. basalt outcrops. Is there any coral? Or do I, I just not want to know? Will it upset me? There were coral yeah. oh. down there. But it's it's good. It's like a recon. Like, we know it's a good spot. We're going to go back in a few hours. <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also, let's see if we can get to the exact same spot. That'd be pretty fun. See how good the nav like skills are, you know, to get right back to the same location. Yeah, or like suddenly there's a, a weather issue. <laughs> yeah. Was it raining when you guys got up here? No. No, no it's fine. It does look like there might be a, a squall on the horizon. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Megan in her past down was talking about seeing some, some gusts. Mm. Gotcha. But it'll probably blow right through. Okay. 
as squalls do. Yeah. Yeah, so this far. current one is coming down now. Oh. Oh. Garage. What's the top of that? 22? Mm -hmm. At the top of that that it didn't get to is 25. Garage. Can we make a grocery list on Intellistrator, apparently? <laughs> I wonder if you have to take one away. Okay. What's up? I'm for stacking you. Should I stop? Oh, am I breathing too heavily? I'm hearing breathing also. not you guys. I was hearing it. Now it seems like it's not happening as much. I wish you could turn yourself on so you could see if you're like the worst mouth breather in the world. <laughs> There's only two locations or three locations that can be or two locations that can be. <laughs> that was me. I, I just did that for dramatic effect. <laughs> I was actively hissing into my microphone at that moment. We all matter. We matter. It's important. All right, should we do some introductions? Sure. It's gonna be a little different than what people see on the website if there's anyone tuning in, because we have two of us who stayed on from the last watch. Uh, but I'll go first. I'm Kelly Moran. I am the communications lead for this expedition. But at home, I am the education program coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust, uh, which operates this vessel and I'm from Connecticut so got quite a quite a long flight to get here and go home but worth it how long of a flight is that six hours no no it's uh, nine hours if I went round trip to say Boston it would be 11 so Ooh. for me it was nine to um, nine hours to Chicago, and then two hours from Chicago to Connecticut. 
That's almost twice my journey. <laughs> but hello, everyone. It's early morning here as we're doing the final part of the recovery. And um, I'm Amber Saravallo. I'm sitting in the guest scientist chair. And I am from UNLV. Hi, everybody. My name is Megan Redkin, and I am the watch lead for the 12 to 4 watch. And um, I'm coming from France, so I think my journey might be the farthest. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> All right, we get it. You it was win. about 30 hours. Oh, <laughs> just a quick trip. Yeah, just a jaunt, a little over a day. Hello everyone, I'm Mary Duree and I am sitting at the, as a data logger. Uh, I came from Louisiana, so definitely not as far. <laughs> Still a journey. Dave, you want to go? Sure. On my other watch, we go the other way, but that's all right. <laughs> You're very busy. <laughs> that's okay. They're busy. Uh, Dave Robertson, uh, lead video engineer on uh, this expedition, sitting in the chair for the next watch. Uh, our intern, Ryan, is uh, not feeling well, so I gave her the night off. Uh, and we're going to uh, do recovery here, and then uh, uh, my opposite number, Tammy, will come on and do the launch. So uh, I hail from uh, Anchorage, Alaska, but live part-time in Oregon. And when I'm not on the ship, I'm retired. <laughs> Front row, is this a good time for some yeah. introductions? Yeah, you're mute. You're you weren't on SPL. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Hi. Hello. I'm Kylie. I'm sitting Argus. <laughs> Hi. I'm Gabby. I'm sitting Herc. Hello. Uh, my name is Nia Beckler, and I am sitting Nav. All right. Cool. So we are heading back up through the blue water. We're gonna be moving through the water column for another hour and a little less than an hour and a half, right? Yeah, that sounds right. And yeah, then we're, we're gonna try to turn around fairly quickly, go back, go back to our dive site. So if anybody's out there listening and you have any questions, we're, we're all ears. We're here. Not yet. Type them in. Is that Kelly back there? I stayed. I'm here. Oh my gosh. It's so good to be on watch with you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Brandy has a connection at 3.30, so instead of having her wake up for the hour and a half watch to then kind of sit and wait for her show, I let her stay in bed. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. It seemed if that was in my case, I would want that, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I just couldn't get enough blue water. I had to have the whole entire <laughs> Got the ground for like 30 minutes and then <laughs> blue. It's all good. Someone's asking if 
um, students can join on expeditions and research. Uh, absolutely. So um, we do take interns out on EV Nautilus. Uh, it's been a kind of weird couple of years due to COVID. Um, we had to defer a lot of our interns from uh, previous seasons who uh, we were hoping to get out earlier, but then COVID happened and um, we finally are able to get all of our interns that we had deferred uh, out this season. So we are happy to be opening up applications again for students. Uh, they should be opening up at the end of summer. And, and oh, yeah. And several of us on this watch are students. So I'm a first year PhD student and our data logger is also a student. Yes, I'm a first year master's student. I am also a student. I am a graduate certificate student. Ooh. So a different category, but I'm getting a graduate certificate in GIS currently. Nice. Charles? Could you tell us what JAS is? GIS. G oh, GIS. Systems. Oh, that was why. <laughs> I am uh, very obviously a little bit sleep deprived. <laughs> I'm not a student, but I I was, and I'm a lifelong learner, and I came on Nautilus as an intern. So a mm -hmm. lot of folks who keep coming back here started as interns. I was an intern. Nice. Yeah, now it's my fifth year. Nice. Can't get enough. <laughs> We have internship programs in ocean science, seafloor mapping, ROV engineering, and also uh, video engineering. So if any of those sound interesting to you, uh, there's a little bit of information on our website right now under um, education slash students, but um, once we get closer to opening up applications, we will put out a larger packet that has much more information and details about what, what it's like and what it entails. And that'll be around the end of summer. Um, but for some other students who might not want to come out on the ship or uh, can't get out on the ship, we also have a program called Scientists Ashore, and we do um, allow students, depending on you know where you are in your research um, or what you're researching, uh, to sign up to be one. Um, and you can join expeditions from home. Uh, joining in a science chat with other scientists and other scientists ashore, uh, chatting into our science team here on Nautilus. So you don't always have to come out to sea to participate uh, in the science operations. We'll What was, sorry. Did, um, Hey, front row, did anyone tell you why they were operating Herc on TCM2? Okay, that doesn't seem right at all, but fine. Well, let's see. I didn't, I'll just try Octans and see what happens. Yeah, 
that seems fine. Huh. Yeah, TCMT is usually off by, you know, 5 to 40 degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of an a range. Someone's wondering what's been your favorite finds on the dive so far. So, anything cool? On the one I've had single a lot of blue dive water, so. <laughs> <laughs> that we've managed right now. Was that boulder we first landed on with all the corals and everything? Oh, yeah, that was nice. Really, that was really nice. We weren't expecting it. Uh, what was the question? Um, what has been your favorite thing you've seen so far? Oh my. Kylie's uh, jelly. Yeah, yeah. the charismatic that was very cool. Yeah, really it was pretty amazing. It's my favorite thing too. Definitely yeah. takes a cake. I think we should, I think we could just call it Kylie Opagon. Oh, <laughs> Kylie oh. Opagon. Okay. All right. <laughs> I want to get the bees. I just like very. I think like polyopagon's a great name for a sponge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jellyfish have nothing to do with sponges, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like it. I think now that we've already said that one, I have to choose something different. So I'll go with one of our lovely rocks that we got during the last dive. Managed you to would. break some of them <laughs> open, and I don't know if the front row got to see any of them. They looked pretty cool. But I did not. Yeah, so one of them um, was several of them pretty highly altered, but one when we cracked it open has some geodes in it. So you should definitely go and have a look see. Yeah, that's a strong statement to call them geodes, but. I'm I'm for it. I mean, <laughs> many baby ones. I mean, it's true. <laughs> Secondary mineralization inside vugs <laughs> just doesn't have the same ring to it. Yeah, we have someone wondering if uh, we have any cool 3D maps of the dive locations that we've been going to. I know. Um, Do we ever? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any highlights up on our website of them, but I know that we've, we've been making them and creating maps of where we're going. Yeah, I can do a quick zoom out on HiPack here uh, so we can see sort of the extents of this map that we're looking at now. It unfortunately won't be quite as cool as our mapping softwares make it out to be. I mean, this is a mapping software, HiPEC. Wait, do you want to get that out on the satellite feed? Yep, Dave looks like he's going to put it up. It's on channel three for anyone ah, watching. Excellent. Perfect. So, are we up? Yep, cool. you're on channel three. Um, so what we've, we've got a, a map here and it's a bathymetric map. So we collected data uh, it's, it's our data from past cruises as well as a line that we correct, collected today across the dive site targets. Um, and generally, we wouldn't have all the contours in here, but that really helps us while we're diving to anticipate, you know, when we're going to have a really steep slope, uh, which is something that we want to be aware of when we're dragging vehicles and driving around and, you know, just as, as a safety thing. Um, we have some other softwares that will let let you go in and like fly through the 3D terrain, and it's really pretty cool to check out. Unfortunately, I don't have access to that up here. I don't think. Um, actually, I might. Let me look. Oh yeah. So. Let me see if I can get the rest of the stuff over here. Um, yeah, I can. 
So this is an example of, of what the data actually looks like after we collect it. This is what's called a subset. So it's a tiny little piece of a map, um, and think, it's a point cloud. And that's that. how we, we clean it. We go through, oh. and we look at all these little points, and we turn like, it around, and we what? can select them, and we can decide if we think they're real. Wait, yeah, um, yeah. We're not we're not seeing that out on the the sat feed for some reason. Is that on the same oh, iPad computer? It's not. It's on the same screen for me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it's not on the same screen for video. Sorry okay. about that. Um, can we get MB proc up, Dave? Is that possible from here? Uh, we have to give up something else. Uh, let's give up. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little sleep deprived myself. Hmm. Uh, MB proc? Yeah. Okay. There's MB proc going out. Okay, so this is that subset that I was just discussing. So it isn't the entire 3D surface, um, but the way that we clean our data when we collect it is by selecting a small portion at a time and sort of walking that in, in a box shape and walking that box through the data and just checking um, all the little spots, making sure that we're not getting a giant what we call blowouts, uh, which usually look like something like that, maybe a little bit more dramatic. Uh, that can happen if we're in big weather or sometimes for whatever reason, we just get a bad return from the sonar. Uh, so we go in and we start, we quality control all of the data by stepping through <laughs> and, it, and we use a point cloud like this. Um, and then once we're all done with that, we have the option to look at the entire surface. Uh, let me see if we have access here to something that might be a little bit more telling uh, as far as what the what the surfaces look like in their sort of full three-dimensional form. This is a dual screen monitor generally, so I think I may have, oh, it might load. Sometimes it goes to the other screen and I don't have access to the other screen from the control van. Uh, generally we process our data down in the data lab, so, but let's see what I can pull up here for ya. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, nope, let's take a look at a different one. That's a bad one. Okay. So, this is what the surface looks like uh, in its final 3D form. So we've been doing a lot of driving around between dive sites, uh, which is why we're seeing sort of one long line of data here rather than something that would be a little bit more um, immersive. Generally, when we survey, we would run all the way down an area Ooh. and then all the way back. Ooh, jellyfish. Look at that. Oh yeah, look at that jelly. <laughs> sorry to interrupt you, Naya. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so this is some of the, we, we call it transit data, uh, because it is just one one line, the swath width of the sonar, which means that as we send sound out from the bottom of the ship, it forms a triangle beneath the ship, and depending on how deep the ocean is in that area, the footprint of that sound is either larger or smaller, and this is what one single footprint looks like at different depths, and you'll see that it gets much narrower where it's shallow, and then wider where it's deep, um, and that's because that, that triangle shape 
is broader in deeper water and narrower in shallower water. Uh, and yeah, we, we end up with some pretty cool 3D maps here. Uh, and we can do all sorts of different things with them. I can adjust the vertical exaggeration. Right now it's at six, so it's pretty dramatic. This is at two, a little less dramatic. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, this is what we end up with when we map, at least sort of in the intermediate stage, and we can take all of our data, we can grid it all together into one giant surface, uh, and, and slowly, little by little, we make a map of the seafloor. Great, thank you. Yeah. Hopefully that wasn't more than, than the, they bargained for. No, I think that was <laughs> awesome. So looking back at HIPAC, this would be an example of a survey that has multiple lines going through it, which is why it's a little bit more continuous uh, than the data that I was just looking at in Fleeter Mouse. Um, and we change the color palettes and add the contours for the dive so that it's a little bit easier to look at when you're super zoomed in and so that we can track things like uh, how steep the slope is and what the depth is really easily with like a visual check. Mm. It looks like the boat has wings on the picture. It does. <laughs> <laughs> How difficult do you think it would be for the makers of, of HIPAC to make it possible for, um, you know, like at the bottom left of the HIPAC screen, we can see the, the lat long mm -hmm. to have like a, a separate layer that was depth so that you could just see exactly where we were instead of having to count the contours? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. I feel like that would be super useful. HIPAC? It's an interesting software setup. Uh, you can collect data using HiPack. Um, and when you collect data, we, we usually collect data using a program called SIS, uh, Seafloor Information Systems, which comes complementary with the type of sonar we have, which is a Kongsberg. So it's a Kongsberg software package that goes with a Kongsberg sonar. Uh, HiPack is a software that you can use to collect data with any system, it's not a like sort of in-suite type of a software. Um, and when you use it to collect data, you can see the depth. But when you bring data into it, it does not, you, you can't bring in like an XYZ value. It is a image-based software. So you can bring in, like we bring in all of our bathymetry as a chart as though it was an, a nautical chart that you would uh, okay. you know, be looking at in the background, um, which is a bit unfortunate because it does make life a little bit harder during the dive. Uh, Hypec is interesting because it's really, really good at a lot of things, but then in some ways, like the like bringing in data as images, it's sort of comically a blind spot. <laughs> gotcha. What are the main users, or like who are who are the who are the main users for HiPAC? Do you know? Uh, HiPAC is used pretty heavily by the mapping community to track like where you are. Um, it's used really a lot by dredge folks, so people who are going out and doing dredge mapping uh, when when they dredge out channels and you know waterways they have to map before and after and make sure and, and do all the calculations for how much uh, material was removed. And um, <laughs> it's just a Cenedex. It's the, yeah, Tim's doing something downstairs. Oh, okay. we, we had a weird noise in the van. We were all alarmed for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
but yeah, you have to calculate the amount of material removed in a dredge, and HiPack is actually like really, really good at that, which is something I've never even used it for. Um, I have no idea how to do it, but it is highly functional in that department. Um, I haven't run into a ton of applications outside of mapping, but I also don't find myself in situations outside of mapping where high pack would come up very often because I'm always at sea in sort of a mapping or navigation capacity. So I'm not 100% sure sort of the breadth of that use. Cool. Yeah, yeah. that was a lot. Thanks. It, is there somewhere in the world's oceans that is unmapped that you would love to go Ooh. out and map? What would be what would be the spot? That's a really good question. Um, there's a lot of interesting mapping going on right now around the poles, particularly the Arctic. A uh, bit of a sort of a resource race in the Arctic as uh, as the ice sort of recedes. A lot of countries are mapping to lay claim on EEZs in that area. Uh, but I think for me, I, I mean, it's tricky. I think I would probably just go to the Marianas Trench and hope that we could <laughs> build the technology to actually map to the bottom because we do not know with like certainty what that looks like and we don't have technology that will get a return from that deep. The, the deepest return I've ever gotten using a sonar was over 8,000 meters and it was complete garbage. There was one ping and nothing around it and could not be ground truthed. It's, you know, the systems just don't have that range. Uh, and, and then the sounds that you would need to reach that far would be pretty intense. So even with sort of the deepest of deep water sonars, the Marianas Trench is a pretty big challenge and it would be cool to get a chance to sort of see what it's like down there. Very cool. Pilots, is there any like uh, submarine feature that you would be particularly most excited to fly her ground? <laughs> oh, Kylie, are you on SPL? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. No worries. Um, I want to go back to the Endeavor uh, event field. Um, we were there with ONC last year. It's really um, interesting terrain with the big black smokers. Um, they're really tall. It's like really important for tether management there. Um, as I advance, like in doing ROV as a career, I'd, I'd like to like do that um, in a more hands-on way. Megan, is there something that you would want to go see? Ooh, um, there's a lot of things I would love to go see. Um, but you know what, today we had a, a lunchtime chat with Tijana about the Lost City hydrothermal vent field, which is a place I have seen many pictures of <laughs> and have read about and she's been there um, and was on 
some really spectacular expeditions out to, to that mm. part of the ridge and I think that would be a really cool place to check out but but yeah I think honestly I would love to go to the mid-Atlantic ridge that'd be really cool I've never been or back to the East Pacific rise it's also a really spectacular place I was able to go there in Alvin and it was really impacted, impacted me. Nia, someone is wondering if you know what the decibel levels of the multi-beam outputs are. Like, what is, do you know what the sonar levels are? Um, oh, off the top of my head. I know, that's <laughs> a tough question. <laughs> it depends. Uh, we, the way that our multi-beam on board here works, it's called an EM302. Uh, so I guess there's your answer. It's 302 kilohertz. Um, but the way that it works is it has different modes and it channels different frequencies at different places depending on what depth you're in and depending on what you need to get a return. Like for example, boy, I don't think I could name the frequencies and the modes off the top of my head, but a, a good example of one of the shifts that it makes as you change depth is uh, as you get really, really deep into the mode that we call extra deep because we're super scientific with our names <laughs> um it goes from a like like a uh, what's the word it goes from a <laughs> a constant wavelength to a frequency modulated wavelength which is fm which is the same thing that your radio is uh, but what that means is it Rather than making one sound, it makes a sound and then has an uptick at the end. And that little uptick means that the sonar can hear it better in a noisy sound environment. Um, so it, it is an incredibly dynamic system and it uses a lot of different frequencies uh, for different purposes, if that makes sense. Someone is seconding the uh, Lost City vent field choice. They're not the only one. Cool. Nice. Also, I apologize if Brandy's normally peppier. I'm <laughs> losing it real fast. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I lost it maybe an hour ago. But <laughs> You're doing great. Yeah. You've been up past your watch. That's a long You're time. You're doing amazing. So, uh, Kelly, I just pulled it up, and it oscillates between 26 and 34 kilohertz. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. We're getting a lot of mapping questions. Also. I love it. Great. Here's more. I love mapping questions. <laughs> uh, they're wondering if the multi-beam sonar or one similar is mounted or could be mounted on a submersible like Hercules for mapping ultra extra deep places. Ooh. Can and has. <laughs> ultra extra. Ultra yeah. extra Currently deep. is, correct? Uh, there is no multi-beam on Herc right now. Gotcha. Um, that usually happens when we've got like, um, there's a research group at U University of Rhode Island um, that I did all my graduate work with and they will bring out a specific uh, sonar uh, multi-beam sonar, sort of more specifically designed for 
being high frequency and being close to the things it's mapping, and we mount it on the stern of Herc, and we send it down, and we make maps. And they're very detailed, like they can be up to sub-centimeter re resolution. Ooh, love that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. We've used it to map shipwrecks. It's really um, nice to do mapping that way because then um, when you map from a ship, even if, if you're in shallow water, it becomes slightly nightmarish to deal with tides and salinity, sound velocity. Um, it, it becomes very complicated to get that same sub-centimeter resolution, and it's nice to have a vehicle that can just go closer and do all of that without having to take into account uh, quite so much of the background data. Right, and that's like, that's the sort of thing that you'd use, like you'd mount it on maybe like an autonomous sub, like an AUV, um, and you'd be able to do sub sea ice work without having to deal with yeah. the sea ice quite as much on your ship. Um, you could have multiple autonomous vehicles out mapping at the same time from the same ship and cover more ground. Um, so I've only used it on a remotely operated vehicle, but it's very much more common to do it on an AUV or to have um, like something like a, um, a side scan, which mm -hmm. would be like sort of like a salvage or a like uh, exploration style um, mapping tool. Like I, I'm, I would bet that that's what they use to find Shackleton's boat would be a side scan mounted on an AUV. Hmm. Yeah, side scan surveying is, uh, it gives you, it's, it's uh, a little different than multi-beam um, because it actually does produce an image rather than a sort of point cloud but it gives you really uh, incredible resolution images and it sort of looks out sideways from a towfish or uh, Argus is, is often used as a side scan, um, but it looks out sideways from the source and you get sort of these images with long shadows behind them and, and very dramatic imagery. It's a very good way to find shipwrecks. Yes, they look pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. You're, you're not on SPL, I think. Oh, okay. Somewhat apocryphal. Yeah. Right now, we have what looks like 65 minutes to the surface. Roger. Uh, we've also, pilots, got some um, some shifting forces. Yeah. I'm hoping they settle in a little before we get closer. Okay. What? Uh.
Oh, what is that gauge called? Just, just reservoir. Yeah, I, I could see that making a big difference. <laughs> the decision-making matrix changes. We have a question on, do deep sea animals ever act territorial when the ROVs come around and try and attack or chase us off? I haven't, I mean, sometimes they bump in. I think they're certainly curious. I wouldn't say territorial, but maybe. We're pretty big and loud and scary, mm -hmm. but um, there's that there was that one Humboldt squid interaction. <laughs> yeah. That's, that Humboldt squid was not pleased with us being there. Squid attack. You were yeah. in his house. I yeah. think also all those little tiny squid didn't uh, you guys get inked for oh, yeah, several totally. minutes? That's <laughs> definitely happened a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like sometimes when we look at squat lobsters, they look ready to fight. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they always ready to fight? They're always, always ready to, to say. They're always ready to fight. There's also that thing that octopus do when they like put up their dukes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they curl up a couple arms and like hold them up. It's very funny. <laughs> I, I feel like octopus are mostly a peaceful species and like a peace loving people, but. But they're ready. Yeah, they may be willing to, to, to defend their territory. Yeah, I get the sense like sometimes we do like measurements, temperature measurements around brooding octopus, and they don't want us measuring temperature anywhere near them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> They've got work to do.
There's also a question on, can you get the multi-beam or the sonar that is on Argus to output a point cloud like the multi-beam? Uh, sorry, Kelly, will you repeat that? I didn't quite catch it. What? Can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. Um, it was, can you get the multi-beam or the sonar that's on Argus to output a point cloud like the multi-beam system? Uh, that's a good question. I would assume so. Uh, so we, the multi-beam that's on our, Argus doesn't have a multi-beam. Oh, the multi-beam that we put on Herc maybe sometimes? I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that would, there's numerous types of software packages that you can come up with to do that. Um, it's basically the same process. Or you just write your own or anything. Same, same, same. Uh, the We use a software called Chimera on board to process our data. That was what we were looking at when I was driving around in the point cloud. Um, and that will accept uh, a variety of types of multi-beam data. Um, so you could bring in, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a particular type it, there are certain formats it doesn't doesn't accept but it is um, not limited in, in a particular sense so mm. we would likely be able to take the multi-beam data from the vehicle and put it directly through our workflow okay I would I would assume I mean I've never tried it but yeah I mean I don't uh, see why we wouldn't be able to because Roman's lab definitely has some students in it that like just write their own sorts of things and yeah. um, I think he, uh, Dr. Roman himself wrote some for his PhD. So there's definitely options, but you could also probably use MB system. Or, oh yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, any number of ways of processing that into a point cloud. I actually can't tell where on the winch we're we're wrapping on right now. Okay. Sorry, I can't hear you. Anyone have any good deep sea jokes? <laughs> you know, George told me one. Oh no. Yeah. Let's hear it. Um, let's see if I can remember. No. Oh, it's complicated. It's not, I just have to, it was like last season. <laughs> uh, what lies on the seafloor in Twitches? In Twitches? What did you say? What lies on the seafloor in Twitches? Twitches? Uh, don't know. Like a lot of things. A nervous wreck. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. George. We should all try to tell him that joke individually tomorrow. Please do that. <laughs> Please that, was, do that. that was exactly what you all asked for. <laughs> I didn't ask for anything. <laughs> I like it. I thought it was for good about one. a half second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a nice little chuckle. I thought it was excellent. I don't know if he bought like a popsicle stick 
collection of deep sea jokes, but there was a week where he was just like rattling off these like <laughs> super corny deep sea jokes. He must have been like googling them. <laughs> he was prepared. He he did I his really homework. I really like the idea that they all came from popsicle sticks though. Right, he Let's just go ate with so that. many like Let's go with that. They were all, you know, blue raspberry flavored. <laughs> 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 he just kept all the popsicles. <laughs> amazing. I wish he was on the bridge right now. We could uh, get Chime some him from in. him. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a nice idea to think of him like actually writing these jokes. <laughs> Ooh, I like that too. I do have a joke. Ooh, let's have it. Um, why do they put barcodes on uh, Swedish Navy ships? Because of the Swedish fish? So they can Scandinavian. <laughs> that's, I think that's Rennie's joke, if I'm honest. Oh my God. <laughs> a lot of them are. They're oh. ship, ship jokes. They just oh. live on the Nautilus now. I yeah. think I've heard that one before. That's a really good one. One of our viewers has heard the nervous wreck joke uh, in the, the last time they heard it, or the first time they heard it was in the late 50s. <laughs> oh my. We oh are, wow. Someone needs to tell George that. I think, are we aging recycle. George here? Well, <laughs> from the vault. <laughs> from the vault. <laughs> we need more jokes. This is good. One of our viewers typed in earlier, um, the joke of what do you call a ship that keeps grinding its teeth? A ground ship. Nautilus. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Very cute. <laughs> Are we at the surface yet? <laughs> I don't know if I can handle this. We're at six four seven. Doing a lot of science. <laughs> We're forty eight minutes surrounded. from the surface. <laughs> We're getting into our uh, more exciting zone though, where we get to start doing other things soon. At least I do. <laughs> it's like our it's our exciting zone is at the very bottom of the uh, sea floor. Yeah. <laughs> My exciting. exciting zone is literally when I can type my new status as I see the ROV at the surface and I can get out of here. Your exciting zone <laughs> is sleeping. And go to sleep. <laughs> I have to write a new status. <laughs> Just start getting a midwater biologist out here to <laughs> ID all these things. Oh yeah. Megan Putz is really good at midwater. Yeah, she Actually, is. any kind of I identification, but uh, she does midwater. Yeah, she's so good. And then um, she has a, a colleague at UH. Uh, named Tiffany uh, that I've sailed with on another ship that is uh, she's the goddess of, uh, of jellyfish and tina fours and all of those kind of things that you see really yeah mm -hmm. she knows every one of them and she loves them she gets excited uh. about <laughs> jellyfish I wish <laughs> <laughs> I just see them and I'm like ooh pretty <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, I don't right? know what yeah. <laughs> I wish I could ID them better yeah uh, I actually learned quite a bit about that. I was I sailed uh, for six weeks doing only midwater transects. Wow. Yeah, saw the bottom twice in six weeks. We saw one of the chunkiest sea cucumbers, though. Oh, I saw that. Right that was our one highlight. We, it was so chunky. And he was trying to. He was to making move. new sediment. We could see it happening. He was just the chunkiest. <laughs> they would not give him any privacy. Or it. I don't know. A bit. Oh, I don't that's know. a good point. Mm. But it was chunky. Like, it was a large sea cucumber. I like sea cucumbers. Me too. They're always so stylish. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Spiky, bright colors. Yeah. Moving around like they own the place. <laughs> yeah. They own that sediment. But very slowly moving around. Very like they own the place. <laughs> They're in no hurry. Okay, we have a good question. That's if you could go into any field of science other than the one you're in, what would it be? So I guess mm -hmm. you have to stick to science, but not the field of science that you're actually in. Ooh. 
Yeah, that's how, hard. Yeah, how specific? No, it doesn't say. Just physical volcanology. Nice. <laughs> okay, but answer. you do geology, though, so. Yeah, but I'm an igneous petrologist and geochemist and geochronologist. I'm not a physical volcanologist. Yeah, but you, you could definitely make that transition. You're in a... Of all things, you would still do rocks. It's a very adjacent rocks. field. I love my volcanoes. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? I'm, I'm just saying, saying, if you had to pick something other than volcanoes, well, I thought, like, what would you like pick? Shallow water reefs for me, I feel like that's cheating. Yeah, like you could like, say shallow. Yeah, I agree with that. Like something compl mm -hmm. like not what you do now. But then like, I can't say the, the, the other things I would do because I've technically done those already too. Uh, okay, you're out. What would you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think doing some... <laughs> you're disqualified <laughs> from this question. <laughs> I don't know exactly what, but I think more <laughs> land-based ecology. <laughs> yeah, I think oh, like in the Amazon the stuff, like Ooh. things like that, like Amazon. still staying like the tropics and like all that. Just looking at the ecology there, yeah. that'd be fun. See, I would think that that would still be too similar as well. well that's a very, that's yeah. very different than a deep but sea coral. I feel like all of our answers are inevitably like the version of my job that's just also in the forest. <laughs> or like yeah. in the cool, the other cool exotic environment. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like I was going to say geologic mapping of land, which yes. is what I do which on is the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> you can see we have a very creative <laughs> raw watch. <laughs> um, I mean, I just want to stay like ecology-based sciences. That's like the most interesting to me. So yeah, I would do hurricanes. Oh, that's Ooh, cool. That is cool. Some weather. That's cool. Yeah. I think Meteorology. I might be interested in doing what, what Gabby was talking about with this <laughs> NASA comet dust spaceman yeah spaceman i would do that <laughs> the cosmic uh, dust curator yes yes, yes that's what go. it was cosmic dust curator Nailed it. Not i'm not man. so sure if you really <laughs> want to go that route <laughs> some of the things that they have to deal with is pretty uh pretty intense <laughs> i was gonna say it's pretty small and dusty i think he spends a lot of time like mm. looking through a microscope mm -hmm. i didn't think about the implications of all the dust yeah. That does sound like a pretty bad time. <laughs> but I also think that he was the curator for like all of the meteorite like samples that they have. It's like Ooh. whenever anybody wants to have oh. a, a, like a meteorite for something, like they go to him. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think being a museum curator as a scientist in general would probably be pretty fun. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. that would be awesome. Like, yeah. Go through all like, the archives think about in your spare like, time. Gives you like the ultimate scope for your nerdiness. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're surrounded by nerdy people too. Like people don't come into a museum and not want to hear about nerdy things. Yeah, no, that's why it's you're here. Delightful. That just sounds like bliss. I also took a fossil prep class, actually like kind of a sequence. I took a lot of it in college and I think I would enjoy going that route as a scientist as well. What does that mean to take a fossil prep class? Um, when they find fossils, they're generally in lots of pieces. Okay. And so there's like, people who specialize in it's a puzzle essentially you yeah. put it back together the way that you think it should go depending on like what it is uh which is you know a grain of salt we don't ever really know right or at least sometimes and then you use putty you use this like epoxy putty to fill in the spaces that are missing and then you can like harden the putty and paint over it and it's like a whole process of preparing fossils for um, skele skeletons, for museums. Oh, um, neat. That sounds really yeah, fun. Yeah, and it's really fun. And it's like quite artistic also, in a way. Yeah, it sounds like sculpture. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of paleontologists are also uh, pretty good artists so that they can do artistic reconstructions of uh, any of the animals or the plants that meters. they uh, We're getting there. find fossils of.
Were there birds outside? I didn't see any. Oh, you're off. Oh. What was that? Oh, the a museum. Oh, which which place? Oh, really? Oh, you could do it. Okay. Was it like an assistant, a curatorial assistant? I'm sure you could. I I I worked there as a curatorial assistant. Um, right after my undergrad, actually, and mm -hmm. because all of the Nautilus samples go there, yeah, and they wanted, they were asking if they wanted people, uh, or if um, if we wanted to send anybody there, and it's uh, it's pretty much like open to working on kind of basically taxonomy of anything you want, because there's so many things that are. Things there. I forget, like, they have the different levels, so I think it was one, like, too high for me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, I definitely wanted a master's, and I was like, okay. no. Oh, what's that? It's a weird looking jelly. Holy, holy. One of the viewers is saying that the Okeanos is going to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge later this year. Ooh, very cool. I don't know if I'll be going with them, but nope. I can appreciate it from, <laughs> from, from shore. afar. Exactly. <laughs> can watch it live with them. Yep. I could use like a good whale right now. <laughs> a what? A good whale? Yeah, oh, yeah, like something just fly on by. Right, just go right by. Don't have to stop, just. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, we can make one for you. It was gonna be a surprise. Don't, don't, uh, don't give it away. Are you sure? No. Uh, I can't hear you, and I've got you. Oh, 
it's not up yet. I can see it on your screen though, it's still pretty cute. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> Just our giant squid. Just chilling, hanging out. A whale. <laughs> that one's okay. I appreciated it. I loved it. <laughs> shrimp, 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 shrimp. Emil said he was going to talk with Steve about how long the next dive will be. If it'll be uh, 18 hours or less than that. Gotcha. If it's 18, I think that gives it to like 10 o'clock at night tomorrow, today. <laughs> right. If we go in at 4. Yeah. Yeah.
Aren't you cold in a t-shirt? No. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm freezing. <laughs> I think your seat gets pretty cold, I'm though. I'm so cold. <laughs> yeah, I think I have a special seat in the van. Everybody seems to be getting cold except for me. You look to be, like, right in between the two vents. I think that's true. definitely helping you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Goldilocks. <laughs> to the left and to the right of me are both too cold, and I am just right. Although once they fixed the AC inside the ship, like the mess was freezing today. <laughs> it yeah. was so cold. And my cabin was also freezing. Oh my god, it's so cold. Really? Mine still feels like warm. <laughs> Maybe I'm just like used to a really cold room. And so <laughs> I don't know. I think the ship is not evenly cooled. I mean... Maybe. <laughs> Maybe when I go back down to sleep, it'll be a different experience. <laughs> Someone says, this is the deepest dive in the monument, which it was. We hit bottom, so it counts. Deepest dive in the monument. It's uh, our second longest dive of the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was my reaction too, Kelly. It's a good yeah. one, right? They also said, good... if this is the deepest dive, is it also a record for the most blue water in a day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's... The I don't most know. blue water in a day? Probably, actually. Yeah, without it being a blue water dive. Or well, water consider, dive. Yeah, considering we recovered earlier. You'd have to consider, like, is is it for us or, like, for Nautilus or for all? Like, I wouldn't say for all, you know, but maybe for yeah. Nautilus. Yeah. It'd be close. It's up there. It's definitely up there. Not sure that that's something we want a record of. No. <laughs> Not ideal. There's no rocks in the blue water dive sections. But you did try and get a rock though. We were like, got to the bottom and immediately Coralie was like, <laughs> waiting to get a rock. You passed over so many. Yeah, but it was taking a while to get the ROVs ready. So didn't have time.
So for anyone tuning in who are asking, what are we doing? Well, we dove. <laughs> we got to the seafloor. Um, there's a, a problem with the um, either one of the lines uh, connecting Argus and Herc, so they're just going to have to recable it uh, or re kind of tie daisy chain, see what's going on, um, and then hopefully we can get back into the water around 4 is our plan, 4 a.m. Uh, our time, local time, and the plan is to just continue what we were doing. So get back in. Um, we're hoping to go and explore an unnamed and unexplored seamount, which is south of Palmyra Atoll in the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. So come back in a few hours. Hopefully we're back in and heading down. People are saying it's prime shark watching time. <laughs>
Yeah, gotta love how curious those oceanic white tips are. Or how, I guess, opportunistic they yeah. are. I've heard they're pretty solitary, so it's cool to see earlier we saw two together. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to see pairs or a pair. And how far away they might have come from after hearing, seeing, and just coming up to investigate and circle yeah. around. We have a fun question that just came in on how do we pass our time when we're not working? Any interesting traditions or games or favorite movies that people like to watch or play? Ooh. I mean, we have movies. Sometimes we watch them. <laughs> I try to sleep. Yeah, sleeping is always one way to pass the time. It's a favorite way. <laughs> <laughs> I like to read my book out on the deck and watch the sunset, watch the sky. Get some vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely didn't bring enough books this time. We have more. Yeah, I've been meaning to go look through them. You have to kind of dig. They're a little, it's a little messy, but we do have a decent amount of good ones. Some I'm old, but some are recently dropped off. I think I left a couple last time I was out here. Yeah, I normally leave one or two. I also really like working out on the ship. It's kind of fun. Everything is moving. <laughs> it's true. The added factor of keeping balance to everything you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> it, makes every, it makes everything like a, a balance exercise as well. Kind of like dancing. <laughs> while working out. But I feel people like to just like kind of hang out together too. You know, when it's sunset time, everyone kind of goes outside who uh, is able to and watches the sunset and just kind of hang out. Yeah. Or anytime we happen to see something like dolphins. Yeah. Or whales off the side. Everybody just kind of gathers around and just watches for a while. It's nice and relaxing. possible. Megan, someone's wondering if you've ever seen anything unusual in the sky while watching. Ooh, um, I don't know. I think, uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. We're getting, is this the, us getting inked again? 
Possibly. Possibly or possibly something else. Or something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the ink. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think just very beautiful clouds and yeah. I think a few people have seen, um, I don't know if it was, I think sunset, green flashes. I have seen green flashes. Yeah, yeah. I, that's same. I've seen a few of them. They're real. Oh, we are. There's little squids. Oh, squids! Yep. They're here to make our blue water dive more interesting. Give us something fun to look at. Uh -huh. And to paint Herc with ink. <laughs> All the A lot ink. Of look at them all. Oh wow! He's not very happy with us. Neither is that one. My goodness, you guys. Yeah, they're cranky at us. Look at them all. Yep. It's surprising how much, like, these little squids can produce. <laughs> like, they're, they don't look very large. Mm-hmm. Oh, are all the ones in front of us out of ink? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> There's surprisingly a lot of them. Mm -hmm. You can like mm -hmm. see them all. Anyone have any interesting facts about squid? Hmm. Uh, well, I don't. Hmm. I don't think so. They taste good. <laughs> I uh, went snorkeling out in Belize once, and you could like entrap one in a circle of people. Like it's very like easy to like swim around, but just I think the like sight of like being circled with people like it stay kind of in place. Hmm. Uh, I'm sure I was told why that happened, but I forget. <laughs> Look at that one. Yeah. Some of these little squids must have either uh, refreshed their stores of ink already, or we've got some new ones that came in just a minute ago. Put some more pennies in the ink bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone wants to know what color do you think that ink is? Hmm. Like a murky brown. But is that its true color? Probably not. <laughs> Look at them all. Hard to tell. Think they just like swim. Look at them. They swim so <laughs> funny. So fast, but so funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just so like floppy. I mean, that little guy just wants us to watch him ink us. Some of them are pink one. and like some yeah. are more white. And then that one almost looks yellow. Um, probably more white. Oh, 
I haven't been timing it, but does anyone know how long we have been uh, getting squid inked? Um, I made the observation first, or I wrote it in at UTC 11.39. And we are now at 11.44 UTC. Yeah, three minutes. So a good five minutes so far and doesn't look to be... <laughs> <laughs> I almost fell over here. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got taken out by the watch lead. <laughs> we are moving a little bit. We're moving a lot. <laughs> My chair literally picked up. It's a little wobbly. That happened to me doing an off, um, interaction In one day. Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to like... I need to be bolted down. Like <laughs> my chair isn't. No, I think my feet bolting you down would do absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm glad we switched chairs. <laughs> it is a bit wobbly. <laughs> I wonder how big like squid squalls are. <laughs> squid. <laughs> a squid squall. Yeah, so it looks like we're getting rained on outside, but they're we're What is a group of squid called? I wonder. Let's Google it. Group of squid. A squad. It's called a squad. A squid squad squall. <laughs> We're getting inked by a squad of ink. I mean, a squad of squid. That bit of ink is very solid looking. I know. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. And then, that's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> and he's upside down. I don't know what he's doing. It'd be so epic if something large swam right now with all these squid around. I'm waiting. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that, Kelly. What did you say? Oh, that it would be <laughs> epic with all these. Like, I think because of the lights with Herc and it being dark outside normally, like, how epic would it be if something large, like, just came oh. by and, like, with all the fish and squid and stuff? Like, <laughs> I fully agree. We know our white tips are up there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. Well, the squids were no whale, but they were still pretty fun. Yeah, no, this is a good ending.
to the shark, white tip shark.
Yeah, I guess it's really like. Actually, I think I would call Nia the pilot on this one. Yeah. I I am in bypass so that I don't overheat the res, and uh, I haven't touched the sticks in a really long time. So not since 100 meters. Well, everyone's doing great. Our ducks are in a row. Quack, quack. Sometimes you feel like an F, sometimes you don't. But today is one of those days. Yeah. Sounds like Charlie's right. There's a lot of spice happening. Yeah. <laughs> the entire cruise. Really.
Okay, you can start to slow your speed down. Roger. Bridge, Nav. Nav bridge. We can start coming down in speed. A speed on, speed on the on the on the step is a speed on the bearing. Roger, maintain bearing. Okay, okay, now bridge. We we have dialed in two knots. We're going to reduce to one point five. Roger. Coming out of the water now. Roger. Good. You can kill power. Tech nav, power is secure. Okay, vehicles on deck, securing now. Roger that.
Copy that.
SPL check one, two, check, 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 check. 